Okay, so for this entire section here, the track is down. Uh, I drop feeders for everything. All the feeders are connected under the layout. Uh, I've ran locomotives consecutively over these uh, switches and on these lines here, and it runs very smoothly. So I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Uh, some people will wait a long time to, you know, move forward from this step because they want to obviously run rolling stock and whatnot. They want to make sure everything is 100%. But uh, I'm pretty confident in my my track work and my wiring here because the wiring is so basic. It's it's stupid how basic it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in all these spots. Uh, you can see there's a couple of rail joiners there. And, uh, you know, what, what do you do in a, in, a, in a case like this? Well, when using flex track, obviously, you're, you're cutting extra ties off the ends, uh, you're making pieces shorter to fit, and that leaves you with a bunch of scrap ties. And in a case like this, where, you know, I've been doing this for a while and there's a number of tracks that I've used, you tend to build up a, a collection. And it goes for the concrete ties as well. I always save my concrete ties, my wood ties, and basically this is what you do. So first off, obviously make sure everything's good before you go ahead. Uh, we've got a spot like this right here. I've already cut the amount of ties that I need to fit in here. And then uh, what you gotta do, along the top, it's, uh, it's kind of rough because that's where it holds in the actual rail. So I take my knife and I just kind of scratch it off so that it's flat. Um, you might have to just kind of cut it gently. Uh, you don't want to cut it all the way down, just enough so that it, the, uh, the little hooks don't catch on to anything. And then all you do is you find a spot where it's supposed to go and then it just kind of slides underneath the uh, pre-existing rail. Usually I use two hands for this, but uh, I'm holding a camera right now, so. <laughs> but yeah, basically it just goes in. I think I might take one, one more off of here just because of the fact that it's really tight. So uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so when you're standing back, I know it's kind of dark, sorry about that. When you're standing back, you can't really see it. And that's a good thing, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that it all looks seamless. But if we take a look, and I'll zoom in a little bit here. See the two rail joiners? That's where I have added the ties. And you would never know unless I told you or showed you. Now, we take basic, I, I get all my glue, white glue from the dollar store. This was a dollar 25. I guess it's a buck or two store. Um, very strange that they would call it a dollar store and sell things for a dollar 25. But anyways, so you just locate where your track is and just like when you're doing ballast, although there's no alcohol or water involved in this, I literally just let the glue seep in there. There we go. And that'll dry clear because it's white glue. And I don't have a spot over here that I've already done that with, but I mean, you can see here all this, there was ties that I've just added, ties that I've just added. Some more spots there, missed a spot, that's okay. And then there was a big one up here. But it's basically just a matter of making it look like no ties were removed. So I've got a couple more spots here to do, and then I am done this entire side except for that siding there, which I'm leaving until much later. But yeah, there you go. On to the next step. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is cover 
your switch points. So that's basically where the inside switch rail contacts the outside, or the same thing on this side of the middle rail touches the outside rail. Uh, you want to make sure that there's still a flow of conductivity there, so you do not want to get any paint on that whatsoever. So I cover all my little points here with some uh, tape. Uh, keeping in mind, yes, the glue is still wet, so I'm not going to be doing entire areas here. This is just for demonstration purposes. So, what you want to do? What is next? Well, we're gonna we're gonna paint. We're gonna paint the track. Uh, I know there's so many different ways that you can do this. This is just the way that I do it, just to get it over and done with, uh, because it is a pain in the butt. So I use this camouflage. It's a, like a light brown. Uh, what is the exact name for this here? Um, ultra flat blended with terrain. No, no. Okay, well, there's no exact name, but it's the brown one. Uh, or, yeah, it's like a brown. But uh, I, this is the color I'm going to do all my ties with. So uh, we want to give that a good shake, and we're going to give the ground a spray where we want to start obviously painting and where do I want to start I'm just going to do a section here just to show you because there's no glue like there's glue up there but I'm just going to do a little section here no problem so just want to So it doesn't matter if you get it on the rail, because I'm going to clean that after anyways. But basically, you just want to make sure that all your ties are covered. If you get some on the rails, again, no big deal, because I'm going to clean that off, and then I'm going to go over the rails with a different color. But that's basically it. And uh, it's honestly, it's super easy, super quick, and this can does go a long way if you're generous with it here, or if you're not too generous with it, I should say. Because... Uh, yeah, you want to make sure it's spread out evenly. You don't want to like overcoat it in one area. But yeah, so that's basically it. And then you go around, you do the entire thing, uh, all your sidings and whatnot. Obviously, if you've got concrete ties, you do not want to use that paint because concrete is not brown. <laughs> you can do that in a different way. But there you go. It's like $8 and it uh, gets the job done. And you'll be able to get a lot, like, I'll be able to do this entire side. I've already done the entire other side. And a few other places all along the layout here. But, uh, yeah, there you go. And, um, yeah, time for the next step. So we have, we have to, honestly, we have to wait for this to dry uh, to continue on. But when we come back, due to, uh, you know, the magic of, you know, movie making, I guess, uh, everything will be dry when I come back. So the next thing I like to do is go over the just the top of the rails with uh, this eraser here. This will remove all of the paint from the top or dirt, whatever you got. And uh, it makes the top of the rails, which is normally the contact point for the locomotives. Uh, and uh, it'll clean it right off. It gives it a nice shine, as you can kind of see. Going down here, you can see the shine, because I've already done all the, the tops there. Especially in with the switches. So, uh, you want to do along each of these rails here. Keeping in mind, this whole section here, there was no paint on there. So it should still make the contacts within, in between the rails here. So that'll be good. But you always want to make sure you clean on top of the rails all along here on top of the frog there you go make sure that's all done and then you can move on to the next step so the next step for working on this uh, side of the layout here trying to fi finalize the track and make sure that everything is good with it uh, before moving on uh, even before ballasting, before the groundwork and whatnot, I like to finish everything with the actual track so I can say that the track itself is 110% done. So, uh, after spraying the whole thing and cleaning off the rails, 
I know I probably could have waited to clean the rails off, but uh, next step, it's actually gonna be a two-step process because I use these pens here, and uh, one is a rail, rail tie brown. So I don't think I will need that because I've already painted the rails. So it's basically just rail brown and then a rust color. So I'm gonna go over all the rails here uh, with the rail brown, making sure that they're all more of a, well, the rail color. Uh, and uh, I, I really only have to do the outside or the sides that are facing outward because that's all you're going to see. You're not going to stand back here and look this way. So as long as the rail is visible, it needs to be painted. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that and we'll come back. But uh, yeah, I just want to show you. So this is what the rail looks like now. And the ties, like I said, are already brown. So that's already done. So I just got to do the rail. And then we'll come back just before I do the rust. Okay, so you can see here on the far track, I did finish painting all the rails, the brown color. I just have to wait for it to dry before I go over it with the rust spots. You don't wanna do the whole rail in the rust color. You just wanna, you know, skip it every so often and put little rust spots. Uh, you would do it heavier for like maybe not something that's a main line like that's that's a main that comes through here uh this siding here that might not be used as much will definitely have more rust to it uh more foliage growing around the track but it all depends on the industry that you're using uh if you're trying to do it prototypical and uh what surrounds the area as well there might not be grass at all but in this area here where there's obviously going to be hill, rock, whatnot. Uh, there's gonna be lots of greenery around here. So uh, when I go to do this industry, which I'm not totally confirmed as to what and how the tracks are gonna be laid out, because obviously these, these still move. Um, I just have my uh, wood cars here for now. Um, but I, it might change, who knows. I do like the idea of it here because I can fit the other three center beam cars on this track. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to wait for this to dry. I did all the way down both rails. Still a bit of a shine, but it's probably because the pa uh, paint is wet still. So I just got to wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to do the rust. Okay, so here you can already see that I have done a bit of rust. Because this is a main line here, there's not gonna be too much because it is more frequently used, so there won't be as much rust. So you can do it very lightly, and you wanna do the inside and the outside. Uh, you're just basically just blending it in. And then uh, when you're doing like a siding, let's say something that doesn't get used as much, you can always do a bit heavier of, of a job here. But I'm gonna keep it light, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna clean the rails again, and then we are done for now. And that's the track.